14, I came out, and I was scared to death. So my mother put me out the house. I was homeless. They didn't understand, but I figured now, 15 years later, you people better understand something. We were angry got into the streets and we got into their faces and we got on the televisions and we got on the radios and we marched and we yelled and we screamed until somebody would listen. If you have pride in yourself, it's a bit hard for people to, to put you down. I came out twice. I came out once when I was 15. My mother totally freaked out. She said, I'd rather you were a drug addict. And once uh, then again when I was uh, 20. And I came to New York to be an actor. And um, I met a man and fell in love. And uh, I pretty much stayed gay. <laughs> My first times being in New York, when you went to a gay bar, you really did peek through a hole in the door. So it was very, very furtive. It was very secretive. The police were raiding us. The police were, in a sense, they were brutalizing uh, the gay community and they were focused on it. Back then, I, I did have a girlfriend, so her mother called the cops on her and my, and my mother called the cops so on us. They didn't want us to be together, so we just ran away. It was taboo back then. It was a, a bad time in the 60s because it was a lot of prejudice. Cops were really something else back then. You know, they, they hit you with sticks and stuff, and I used to protest. So I had to run, you know, so I don't get damaged. And then they tried to arrest me for lottery. And I was just standing there. I can still remember the names of all the women I had crushes on, but I was still in my 1960s, girls go out with boys. I joined Jehovah's Witnesses when I was 18. I went to a meeting and developed a huge brush on this woman called Gladys. I always now wonder, did I join Jehovah's Witnesses or did I join Gladys? I'm in front of the Stonewall Inn right here, okay? Uh, I'm gonna pull down my mask a little. I did spend quite a bit of time in this bar. This is where the Stonewall riots uh, began. That period of unrest gave the gay community some some strength and some power to start coming out and saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, what about us? I do remember the first Pride Parade. I mean, it was ecstatic because they were seeing us for exactly who we are, the way we were. People were marching in the street, openly gay, and then there were people on the sides of the street saying, yes. <laughs> During the first Pride Parades, we started to feel that we could hold hands, that we could be in public together and not be ashamed of it. I have to say, it was one of the most incredible feelings I've ever had. Hi, I'm down at Christopher and West Street, and this is where the Pride Parade would end every year. We always wanted to, you know, be involved in the gay community, and that was our way of going to the village and standing up and going for the parades. Peaceful, because everybody was family, and that's where I used to have my most openness, and that's the best place to be. Because everybody's different, you know? Life is a rainbow. Here I am on my way outside to introduce you to Jezza. This is Jezza and Kitty, actually. 
I was the real mother and wife, you know, cooking the dinners, knitting the jumpers and being the model Jehovah's Witness wife. But there was like a big piece of jigsaw piece missing. Then one day I met a young woman and we both fell in love. We didn't know that's what it was. And we actually said to each other, oh, it's not that, it's not that, we're not like that. But we'd, we'd walk the streets holding hands uh, in the dark and we'd write to each other and, you know, the usual in love things. I decided I wanted to leave the witnesses. It was very, very difficult to withdraw from the life I had to be the person I wanted to be. But the person that helped me do that was my mother. That's when I started looking for other people like me. And that's when I got political, really. Oh, well, here we go. There's another hill here. Doesn't look bad, but it goes on forever. When I was cycling from Clondalk into Dublin, I didn't notice the hills. Do you know, I think it's because I had my first girlfriend sitting on the crossbar. Yes, feet on the pedals. Freedom. The 80s was, was very exciting and very liberating. But we did, we had things like AIDS and that caused more prejudice. People that have lived as long as me in the gay life overcome all different prejudices so you've gone through phases where people find you acceptable and then when they get frightened of something find you unacceptable and then acceptable and unacceptable during the AIDS crisis there was a lot of fear um, and so that was a time that you did not want to display affection in public we, we felt comfortable after pride about being out and about and then about eight to 10 years later, thousands and thousands of people started dying. I live in a building of subsidy for actors and um, we lost over 350 people in two buildings. I can't tell you uh, watching the loss of so many young, young people, 30 year old people, you know, walking around looking like they're 80. You know, walking the streets looking like they're, I didn't recognize friends of mine. I didn't know who they were. It was a very hard time to, to, uh, to maneuver through that. They believed it was this gay cancer. And so because the gays were dying, uh, it didn't affect the rest of the world. Well, it affected the rest of the world in a big way. And we were angry. Step behind the white line, please. Niggas, niggas, niggas gotta go. And we got into the streets and we got into their faces and we got on the televisions and we got on the radios and we marched and we yelled and we screamed until somebody would listen. So uh, that freedom that we do feel today, and we do feel it. Um, I, I, I would have to say, as somebody who's older, I'm not as comfortable with it, I think because I lived through that. Um, but the younger people I see, seem very, very comfortable with it, you know, uh, with being out and feeling free and feeling open. And, and they, they seem to have a very strong voice. And I love that. Right now, it's still really about activism, isn't it? They have Pride is Riot and BLM for Black Lives Matter. And um, I think that's pretty terrific. Well, people are getting fed up with the police brutality. Well, I try not to <laughs> protest too much now because I'm a senior. But I still believe in some of the, you know, the rights that people fight for. I just don't like violence because when you do violence, you get hurt. And being black in America, it's not good right now at this time. I'll just be safe, you know. As I've gotten older, I've gotten wiser also. Now's my turn to sit back and try to enjoy. When I first started marching, they would only give us the back streets. 
things are very, very different now and it's because people have spoken up. Be true to yourself. If there's a piece missing, find it. And if you're gay, accept it and embrace it and enjoy it.